Welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. If this is your first time here, I'm someone who has been in the software industry for about 35 years, a Microsoft MVP since 2002, and I like web development both in C Sharp and in JavaScript and TypeScript. Before we get started, instead of having a sponsor, I'm going to be my own sponsor. I've just completed updating my end-to-end -end course on Pluralsight for ASP.NET, Entity Framework, Tailwind, and Vue. You build an application from file new all the way to a completed application. And because of that, I want to show you how Fluent Validation supports that through a couple of different ways of writing validators that might not be so obvious to you. Let's get started. I'm in a application called Address Book. You can get that at the GitHub down here if you're interested. It's a very simple API plus view application that I put together to do a lot of these demos. And one of the things that I want to do is think about how validation works. Now in our APIs, which I'm using minimal APIs, we have on our post and get, we have these validate functions that use fluent validation. And so in fact, we have in our validators, different types of validators for the specific kinds of things we're talking about. And so let's look at that book entry validator. Pretty simple. I've created an abstract validator using book model. And if you're not familiar with fluent validation, this is a way you can define rules for specific types so you can have this validation checked. But when you need to do something like rule for our user's birthday, or date of birth, it becomes a little more, this isn't a great example of getting into custom validation, but I want you to see how all the pieces are working. Using must is a really common strategy. And then we can simply say b.year must be greater than, let's say 1900, because people will be 120 by now, so that's pretty safe. And we're gonna say that b.year has to be less than date, time, today, dot year, right? Pretty simple, this validation works, but because we might have more than one birth date in our project, we might wanna not leave it here. And so let's go ahead and create a reusable function we can use here, right? So I'm gonna say must is valid birth date. I'm going to just generate a method for us. And unsurprisingly, we can just return. And let's change this to instead of date time, let's say birthday. Super simple. This is going to give us that valid. And we could even do with message, you know, bad birthday or something like that, right? This would allow you to put it in some class that you're going to reuse, maybe a base validator or something else. So you have these different kinds of validators that you can do that. And that's fine. For small, simple ones, that's probably good enough. And in many cases, the must is going to be plenty for what you're doing. But let's talk about another way that's going to give you a little bit more control. And that is, I'm going to comment this one out and say, custom. Now, custom is very similar in that you're given the date time, and you could do this check here, right? I will reduce these back to B for now. But what this actually expects is a value there, and what this passes in is actually also a context object. Let's go ahead and surround those, and let's take a look. Date, time, context. I always get those in the reverse order. So we can do this test. But what custom gives us, because it gives us this context, is it allows us to do if, or let's say greater than equals to, or year is greater than this year, or let's say greater or equal there. And let's make sure this is an or since I'm reversing the whole thing, right? If that's true, what are we going to want to do? We're going to want to do context.addFailure, and then we can give it information about this failure including using certain um, placeholders. So we could say the 
property name. And this is one of the things that Fluent Validation does is allow you have these placeholders. It is not a valid date, right? And so what you see here, let me come out, come out to this one as well, because by using custom, you're going to be doing the messaging directly inside of the custom. And so we could actually do more interesting things, like if the date is less than 100, else if the year, we could have different messages for which one of these happen, right? So I could say the property name has a year that is too old, and must be less than the current date. And so you could see doing more interesting validations with this. And this is perfectly fine. We could, of course, make this into its own method that we can share a bunch of times. And, and that works as well. Occasionally, there's something that is so commonly used in your organization, you might want to actually go one step further and create a custom property validator. So let's go ahead and create one of those. And so over here in validators, I'm going to say birth, birthday property validator, right? Let's flatten that out. And here we're going to derive from property validator. And this validator could take a variety of types, but because of how we're using this, we're actually going to have a T here, a template variable, because that's the type that this validator is going to be used on. So in our case, a book entry, right? And here we're going to need to pass in the data type of the model, but because we're only going to support date time, we can just put date time in there. Let's see if we can bring that fluent validators in. And then if we implement the abstract class, we get this lovely is valid, right? Of course, what you do there is pretty much the same as here, right? So we could just say, if either of these happen, return false, because it did not validate. So let's just rename these so that we can use it pretty quickly. So I promise to get these under 10 minutes usually. And we'll just put an else in here that says return true. So it's fine, otherwise we'll return false, right? Could put it in each of these, but in this case, we can be pretty happy since that's the only one that returns. And the other piece of this that we have to do is actually give it a validation type, and I'll call this our birthday property or birthday validator, let's say. Both of those things are required. Well, we could use this validator in there. I like to go ahead and create a public static class move that up a little for birthday property validator extensions. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of long names, but it seems to be apt here. So public static, just to avoid there, I'm going to come back and actually use the correct type. We're going to say has valid birthday. Now this takes that same type that we saw earlier, and it has an extension of actually this. This is the type we're gonna have, and that's I rule builder. And we're gonna take that same type, and we're also gonna say that the out property here is gonna be date time, right? Just like we've done before. Rule builder. Return that rule builder by saying set validator. We're going to set the validator by just passing in a new instance of our birthday property validator. And this will contain that same T value. Of course, it doesn't like the return. And I'm going to let it fix the return type, which is why I had it as a void, because it's this rule builder options that has the correct T and date time in there, just like we've done everything else. And because of this, we should be able to come back here. Let's comment out the custom and we'll say has valid birthday. 
And then it will validate that property that we know of. And this works because we're writing the rule for date of birth and then we're given access when we call this to pass that information into the validator. So those are a few different ways you can actually do custom validation or more business rules validation. Again, dropping down into a property validator should be the, the exception, the exception, the exception, the 1% or the 1% of the cases. But knowing it's there for things when you need it is great. Custom and must are pretty common ways to do that as well. Hopefully I've added some errors to your quiver when it comes to doing validation on large projects. I'm still in love with the way that Flute Validation does most things. And it just shows you that the thought has been given to this to handle very complex situations. If you've gotten this far, of course, I'm going to ask you to like, subscribe. That all really helps me. I'll see you next week when I'm going to be talking about something special in view. So keep an eye on that. That'll be released Monday or Tuesday of next week. But thanks for watching. If you have any questions, go down to the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Have a great day.